Hey everybody, it's David R. Becker with Becker Art, and we are going to paint a boat today. <laughs> My favorite, um, I noticed that in class today, it's probably not one of some of their favorite <laughs> to do a boat, but my favorite, my all-time favorite is to paint boats. And um, we are going to toast tonight with a Shiner Holiday Cheer. Shiner Holiday Cheer. And let's give it a pour. I should have poured this before. Oh, look at how dark it is. A little dark amber. Look at that. I actually did a pretty good pour today. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Happy New Year. Oh, wow. That's that's good. That is really good. Oh, I think I'm going to have another 11 here. Boy, that's, that, that is really good. 10 or 11. Let me, th let me think about it. All right. So, um, welcome, guys. And so today we're going to be doing a scene with the sun blasting right in our face at a marina. And um, on Tuesday, I said we're going to be doing a lot of soft edges. Ends up, this doesn't have as many soft edges as I had thought. Um, but um, we'll, we'll show you uh, still what to do about the soft edges and how to get soft edges. In the background, we do have to kind of go and get soft edges, but not as much as I had thought. And so next week, we're going to definitely have a little bit more like we did last week with the Cardinal. Uh, where we had the cardinal, the background was, and you guys did a great job on that, by the way, with keeping the background really, really um, soft edged. And so that's a really awesome thing. Uh, hi, Cindy and Paula. And let me see. We're probably not going to have that many because it is getting really close to New Year's, but uh, thanks for stopping by. And so let's go right to our um, thing in the beginning. I always talk about my website. So if you want to find out my website, it's beckerart.net, and that's where you find all my things about um, what we're painting on. Tuesday, on Thursday nights and this is how and my newsletter comes out on Tuesdays that comes um, and that's what I talked about about soft edges and so down here is where you get my newsletter if you're new you can sign up for my newsletter right here um, float your pigment newsletter sign up and it actually looks like what's going on here where's the thing where you sign up huh I have to look into that <laughs> anyways uh, let's go to our supply list here's my supply list and we're not using any maskoid today um, I did last week, but not this week. So um, I could use probably use some maskoid in this, but I don't really need to. You could put it in the sun, but I'll explain that in a second. So here's what I, I, I put a little filter on this this week, and I just want to show you the filter I put on it was kind of like a watercolor filter. It's, it's actually called a watercolor filter. And I know a lot of artists use that for themselves um, to actually paint the item when it's done. I, I took a black and white and put a filter on it. And sometimes, sometimes people will put the color version and put a filter on it and then just paint whatever they see in the filter. Um, I don't really like to do that as much as some of the artists out there. Um, some of them are, are doing a pretty good job with that, but I like to keep it where um, I want to see what the lights and darks are and how important it is. And if you look right here, if you look in this area, the sun is shining really bright. See right here, it's shining really bright. So that engulfs this whole area. And um, so we're going to put a lot of orange in there. We're going to and a lot of people in class today were saying, well, there's so much stuff in there. Simplify. Definitely simplify. And I'm going to show you my drawing in a second, how we did. And actually, I didn't do as great a job as I thought I was going to do this afternoon. But um, let me just show you right here. So this afternoon, what I did was this. And um, it's a little bit light. I kept the background lighter uh, because I didn't want to. I wanted that to push back. And now that I think about it, I would have liked to have that maybe a little bit darker just to pop out the boat. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a, you know, it's it's just such a small thing. But I'm definitely going to get a little bit darker with, with the surrounding. Because the darker you get with things over here, then it makes the sunlight over here a lot vib more vibrant. And so I didn't capture the light as, as light as I wanted to. And so that's the only thing I'm thinking. And also, if you look in here, look close up, let me just show you really quick is that there's not much of anything in here, right? I mean, you don't have to make it look exactly like the photo and where you put everything in there. I just did a bunch of up and down brush strokes and that way it gave me a look of like boats in the distance. This time I'm gonna do a little bit better job because I didn't draw it out as well here in this one. And a couple other things I'm probably gonna do on this one is I'm gonna explain a little bit more about what's going on over here and just keep it darker. All right, and so let's get going with that. And if anybody new here, um, please ask your questions on the side, on the chat, and I will see, I will look up every once in a while to see what's going on there. Let's see who's all here. Hey, everybody. <laughs> There's so many I'm gonna, 
Okay, we got some new people. No, I think we got all saying. So thanks, guys. Thanks for stopping by all the time. <laughs> and um, again, you guys are doing such a great job with the um, with the with last week with the cardinal. Super, super job on the backgrounds. That was all about the backgrounds last week, and I was hoping that this would be more about the backgrounds, but it isn't. Um, I just saw this image, and I and I took this actually. I took this image, and I just saw it in my thing, and so I thought I got to do this one. So again, cheers. This, let me see. I think this is going to be about, about 11. Shiner Holiday Cheer Beer. And there it is. See, Holiday Shiner Cheer Beer. It's very good. I'm going to... I think I'm going to give it an 11. I really like that one. All right. So we're going to start out with the background and um, wet in the wet. And you could... Where the sun is, it has to be white of the paper. So either you put masking fluid there. I have a relative from Clayton. Hey, Ann. <laughs> uh, this is not from Clayton, this um, picture. Let me see who I'm um, checking in. Looking forward to this. Happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year, New Year, New Year, New Year. Um, do I recognize Clayton Marina from your New Year trip? This is not Clayton. This is actually um, up in Minnesota. It's like Superior, or Superior, it's called Superior, Wisconsin, and um, it's called Barker, Barker Marina, and I was there one time, and um, a friend of mine and I were up here, and the, the sun was just going down. We had so many pictures, unbelievable, but let me just show you really quickly. I'm going to get this done. I keep on stop, stop, stop talking here. So I'm going to wet the surface, and I could use, I could use my mister, but then it's going to get inside to this area, so I'm just going to wet the whole area now. And it's, it's hard for you to see, I'm sure. Oh, I was going to show you how to do this trick. Let me just show you really quickly. For all of you who have never seen this trick, when you want it, I have a lot of um, of the pigment down here, or the um, lead. And so I just go over it with a rolling pin, knead rubber eraser. I kind of make it into a rolling. And it's still wet over here. I can't do it over here now, but over here I can. I'm going to take some of the imagery off of there because some of the pencil lead. So it gets onto the rolling pin of the knead rubber eraser. And I just clean that real quickly by doing this. And, but it gets it, it keeps my drawing, but gets rid of some of the um, the lead. All right, so I keep on wetting here while I go along. And I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna do the whole picture, the whole picture I'm wetting. Because I'm doing the background lights. I'm doing the sky, and then I'm gonna do the front foreground water all at once, all at once, because that's my light area. Then I'll go in, right into my middle tones and my darks. I, t I made it a three-step in class today, and I don't think I should have probably done that. I probably should have done more of a, um, just what I'm going to do here and now. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. All right, I'm going to start with a little yellow. Um, I'm going to start right around, and I'm going to put a little bit of yellow right there around here, this area. I'm not going to use a lot of um, paint because I want it to be more of a tint. I'm going to go from a yellow and go right into the boat where it's going to be really light. And that's going to be like darker than the sky. And from the yellow, we go into an orange. And in this picture, uh, I see it's more orange. Everything is more orange and there's like a little bit bluish gray in the sky. But what I did is here, I made it really blue. And I think I'm going to stick with more of the yellow and orange this time. Um, I, I felt that I, I thought I'd, I maybe just have some of the blue from the boat that's in the boat. Um, in the sky too, and I can do a little bit of it, but I'm not going to do as quite as much as that. Um, I think the blue makes it more of a daytime, and I should use purple. I think with the yellow, again, um, my poor class has to always <laughs> be my guinea pigs, um, and so we're always doing something different in the evening because you learn from your first from your first one, and so first painting, which I normally would never like to do two. I normally never like doing two, but I'm actually kind of liking it and enjoying it because. It kind of gets me through what I think is I think is going to happen, but then I realize it doesn't, and then I have another chance to make it work right. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wet everything, and I will put a little bit of, um, let me just get the yellow and orange in here first. I will put a little bit of lavender is what I'm going to use. I'm going to use some lavender down here. i got to fill this up. Uh, put it in order, but it hasn't come yet. So I'm going to just put a little bit of lavender here. Lavender with yellow and orange. Make kind of a, a kind of a brownish, you know, gray. And that's what you get when you mix um, complements is you get grays and you get um, browns. So it's going to be a little bit of that in there. Maybe a little bit more yellow. 
a little bit more orange. And make the sky whatever you like. And now this is wet in the wet, so that's where you're. This, that's where that whole thing comes in when I'm talking about controlling the pigment. You know, control it. Get your line work that you want in there. Oh, you guys are talking away over here. Let me see. <laughs> Yep, it was. It's from Superior. It's from um, Barker's Barker's Marina. Not from Bayfield. I've been in Bayfield. I actually got a bunch of shots from there too, because I, I try to visit all the the marinas all around Lake Superior, and I just love marinas. And yes, and I, when I was in Clayton, I also got a bunch of great shots there too. It's just and so see how I um, this time it's a little bit different in the fact that I didn't use blue. I'm going to use a little bit of, um, like I said, violet. Here, I'm going to put a little violet in there because I'm running out of my... I'm going to make my own lavender. So if you ever want to make your own lavender, take um, permanent violet and put white with it. It's the same thing. It's pretty close to the same thing. If you don't have a, a lavender, just take white. I take I use titanium and white, and then I mix my, my um, permanent violet, and that'll give me a nice lavender too. And then you can make it red, more red by adding a little bit of red to it. Or so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna right away put in some of the waves here. And, and um, I'm not gonna put anything other than, I'm not gonna put any of the darks yet. None of the darks. It's just basically the sky, the sky color. I'm gonna put a little bit more yellow close to here. And I'm gonna, um, right after I get this done, I'm gonna go right in. And gets the soft edge stuff that's in the background. That dark, it's gonna be dark, but I'm gonna keep it soft edge. So that's what I'll probably do right here. Let me just um, again. Let me just go in here a little bit more, a little bit darker up here. If you want to put like um, some clouds in there or put something a little darker, that's fine. Or if you want to do a blue like my first one, I mean it's not bad. It's not. It's just not what I had expected. I mean it looks like. This is daytime and this is <laughs> this is the evening, so it doesn't quite match what I think I was going for, and so not a bad picture. It's just sometimes when you want to do something a certain way, you gotta try it and attempt it. And so I realized that I, this is gonna be a little bit more like a evening scene. Let me just get a little bit more of the golden here. All right, what are you guys talking about over here? <laughs> Fugitive color scheme. I've been working, but have today off. Happy to be here. Hey, Jenna. Hey, Tabasum, Mora, Anne, Monica. Well, we got a lot of people here today. <laughs> well, maybe it's because you're all off, and so it's actually a good thing. So I'm going to... Um, right now so I'm, this is has to kind of dry but since um i don't have the time to just sit here and wait and let it dry i'm gonna do some of the background colors in here it's all wet i could use my hair dryer but i'm gonna go right away and just get some of the things going on back here so right here where the sun is and i kept that white of the paper that's going to stay white and what i'm going to do is and boy my screen it doesn't make this look very colorful but in i don't know if you can see this is very colorful this is very orangey yellow. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in here with my smaller brush and I'm going to go in with some pretty solid colors of yellow and orange. I'm wet my brush here a little bit. Get, pick up some pretty thick amount of pigment because my water is down. Remember, if your water is down and controlling your pigment, you don't have to put much water in your brush at all because it will bleed all over the place. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take... The, pure pigment on my brush get rid of the water by just putting it on my on my towel i always have a towel underneath everything i do so i can just wipe down and now see i didn't wipe away the pencil line on this side because it was wet and i could have because it got pretty dark this um pencil line but that's okay it's it's just um one of those things i forgot i i can get it afterwards too so here i am going with pretty thick amount of paint it is gonna be a soft edge, which is okay in the background. You know, it's okay to have um, soft edges in the background. Just use thicker paint. Uh, that's not a bad thing. Using thicker paint is, when you're doing it on a wet surface, is fine because it's gonna float. It's floating and it's doing fine right there like that. And so I'll make this really vibrant color here. And right away, I'll go to a dark color. So it looks like it's um, optical scatter, is what um, Carl Bretzky taught me when I took one of his classes back up in 
Lake Superior up in Grand Marais last year. I took one of his workshops, and um, he was talking about optical scatter, and that's where the sun just basically engulfs that area and makes it kind of bright, bright orangey. And then from that point on, it goes right away. It goes to the dark, whatever it is. You know, so I'm going with a little bit darker color here, and then I'm going to take a little violet, make it a brown, makes it a brown, and then I'll go in with some blue green because I'm sure it's pretty. That is a green tree, but it's just going to make it a dark brownish color. Is basically what's going to happen. And so right here, I'm just going to kind of go in there and get the soft edges. It is still wet, and you know, you guys did such a great job with it. Don't be afraid of working wet in the wet. Wet and wet is a good thing because then you get a soft edge and it looks blurry. And what is more fun than doing blurry? I mean, that's great if you can get blurry and soft edge and not have to identify everything in that area. Like, I know there's a lot of stuff happening back here, the back of the boat and stuff. But if I just do this and make it look really a lot of different brush strokes back and forth, up and down, that'll be enough to show that there's a bunch of stuff back there, but you don't have to know exactly what it is back that's back there as long as there's some line work here and there you're fine you're fine 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 and then by being by making it um blurry by making a soft edge blurry and soft edge are basically the same thing and um that way it looks blurry and you don't have to identify it and it's colorful and it's wet in the wet and you're getting floating pigment so everything is on your side when you do that when you work wet in the wet and learning how to control your watercolor is so important. If you can get the, that control in there, everything else is so much easier. You know, it's it's so hard to control that edge, but once you get it, boy, you're going to go a long way. Paula likes pencil marks on the painting. I think it adds to the Yeah, so do I. I, I usually don't... Um, I usually don't erase um, the pencil line afterwards because I kind of like it. I think it makes it look more artsy, like it is original, you know, when you get the pencil lines. I know a lot of people are very clean and tight and they don't like to have the pencil line in there, but I don't mind it at all. Actually, I kind of enjoy having the pencil line there. Again, I think it's, it makes it look realistic and like it's a real painting and not a print, even though when you if you have a good printer, they can make it look like... Um, the pencil lines are, are make it look like it's real, real. It's amazing, these printers nowadays. All right, so I'm going to go in here and get um, the lavender again. And I'm going to do the light little things that are back here, light. And um, I'm basically, that part is going to be done when I get done. And here a little bit, I'm going to look up there and I notice that it's a little bit too, too much stuff happening there. So um, I'm going to put some opaques in here later too. I'm going to show you and put some whites and stuff in there. I don't mind doing that. Um, I'm I'm not a purist when it comes to watercolor. If I have to put a little bit of opaque in there or even gouache in there, I have no problem with that. I'm making this a little bit more yellow. Yeah, this is um. Hey Maria, uh, this is this is my favorite subject matter basically. When it comes to my favorite place ever to paint was um, Venice. I had a workshop in Venice one year. And man, that place is so cool. It's got boats, water, cities, rain, it rained that day. I loved it. It was super, super great. So we're going to go a little bit farther here. Now let's get her some of our darks. Now this boat, I put a lot of yellow in there. And so while it's still wet, I'm going to throw a little bit of the, um, I'm going to kind of wipe that out a little bit because I do want to make that blue. Um, I was thinking about this uh, on the way back home that I did the same thing when it's there. So I'm just wetting this area and getting rid of some of the yellow. And then while it's wet, I'm going to put some of that blue that was in the boat. Or I can make, actually make a, make a purple blue, like a lavender, maybe a little bit blue. I'm just going to put that over across it and let that dry too. And just so it um, has a different look. I know it's, it's really the only blue in the picture. And that's why I put some of it in the other parts. But since I don't have blue in here, I'm going to make it violet, a little bit more violet. And it is kind of the, um, it is the shadow part. And on the edge here, it's light. And the, I did the same thing here is what happened was I made this yellow also through there. But I see I put blue on top of that then afterwards. And it's, it's fine to do that afterwards too. Nothing's ever lost. You can just um, keep on going. And so now I have 
the big areas. This is all pretty much um, the foreground. This could have got a little bit darker, and I can still do that later on. But let me just do the top background first. Let me get the background done real quickly. So I'm going to again make it violet -y, kind of the color same. I went permanent violet, a little bit of blue. And then what I did, I used some lavender. What else did I use in there? Over here, I made, oh, and the orange to make it um, the brown. And so now I'm just going to go in here and get those darks right away. Oh, yeah, I was going to do here first. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to go here, get my edges. Now it's kind of dry, so I can tap it down and make it look like foliage back there, which it is. And down here, I can make it look like there's kind of boats and stuff. So it goes from a light, and it's just going to go dark. And then once it's wet, you know me, drop in those other colors, drop in other pigments, because nothing is just one color. All this yellow and will be in there a little bit. It's gonna um, come over here a little bit and then I'm not gonna do it really hard edged right here yet because it's wet still right there, I just did that. And then the side of this boat is gonna be nice and, um, is it the side of this boat? I gotta watch out that the pier right here is staying light. That's the only thing I have to worry about is that the pier stays light. There's a pier right to the middle there that is gonna be a light part. Now let's go over here real quickly, get this, um, there is actually like a building or a little little building part back here. And then we've got a tree here. We can do what any kind of tree I want. Um, it kind of looks like, a, if I put palm trees here, it would look like Florida. So if you want to make it look like Florida, just put some palm trees in this, in this marina. If you want to make it look like Superior, put pine trees in there <laughs> or just regular trees. And so I'm going to go down here. See, I'm not worrying yet about the shape of too many things. Just the outer edge of the of the trees. I'm shaping that a little bit. I should bring this higher up here and make it go down like it perspectively goes down that way. So. Okay, so I think I've got pretty much my darks in the background pretty much going here. And um, it is not as dark. It's still, I, mean, I can get darker than that. And that's a good thing though. Cause um, I don't want to get to my darkest dark yet. Uh, my darkest dark will be when I get the um, the details and you know, my dark details. That's the very last thing you do. Now I will get the, um, since this is dry in the bottom here, I'm going to go right into my um, reflections. Since it is dry, I always check with the back of your hand because the back of your hand doesn't have oils on it. So you just go like that and check and it's dry enough. So I'm gonna take my rectangular flat brush and I'm just gonna go in here and right away get my dark, my dark reflections. And so I'm gonna use the purple again because the purple and or and yellow are kind of complements. So it'll give me a really nice dark. And, uh, and it'll give me a brown because I've used orange and the purple. Well, it's the orangey, orangey yellow. It'll give me kind of a brown. So I'm gonna go in here now Start on this side, and I'm just gonna kind of go in here. And um, I don't have to go around all the little details yet up on top here, but I will later. And so knowing whether there's gonna be a couple things up there, I'm just gonna put them down here. I know there's gonna be the poles and the masts of the of the sailboats back there, so I can put those in right away too. Or wait until I get my smaller brush, my rigger brush. And so here, this boat right here is gonna be reflected into this area. And of course, once I get it kind of down, I am going to also put other colors in there. So here I'm doing a back and forth brush stroke, stroke, brush stroke motion, back and forth. See how I'm doing this? Keeping the edges really sharp, like they're like I'm sharpening the edges, and then it kind of bleeds off into small little things here. Put a little bit of blue in there. Put a little other colors in there. I like to float other colors in there. So again, it's just not one color. We don't. And we're not doing a um, limited palette here. Otherwise, then yeah, I would do that. But here, we're not we're not doing a limited palette. Put a little bit, and then this goes over. It comes around this way. I put a little bit of that gold orange in there too. Put a little bit of that in there. You can put a little bit of top on here. I know it's kind of detail-y when you're putting your darks, but those parts are have to be done. So 
by going in and getting it a little bit more detail, that's fine. You know, it's fine because you either do it now or a little bit later. But since I've got the brush and I got a really sharp brush here, I can just do it now, get it done with. Against this boat, I'm going to do a little bit of that in there. There's another pier back here. And there's a pier coming this way. And again, now this is wet. Remember, other colors in there. Float other colors. Float your pigment. Um, there all could, also could be light uh, washes in there. I'll do that later with white paint because I will put a little bit of something in there to make it look like some of the yellow white I'll put back in there. You can do that with opaques. Otherwise, you have to do it now with, um, or beforehand with masking fluid, which we don't need to do that. Coming down here, coming down, permanent violet, permanent violet. And then the side of this, side of this pier has a little bit of um, ripples. This, this water is not really moving that fast because it's evening and it's pretty much very calmed down. So you're not getting many like ripples and stuff like that. So you're not getting waves and you're not getting a lot of sparkles off the water because you're not getting all the waves to hit off the top of there. So now this boat, I'm going to reflect that right away into the water and I would have done the boat right here the dark part of the boat right away but since I didn't um, since I wet that area to put the blue in I don't want to I want to get a sharp edge there so I can do that afterwards too it's not that big a deal you notice my brushwork is always going back and forth like this Paula asked about if we ever did fireworks no that's one thing I've never been able to I did find an um, artist one time who do fire, had did fireworks really great. Um, I had him in my newsletter. I had an awesome, awesome way of doing fireworks. And we have never done them yet because it's kind of a hard thing. You definitely have to use masking fluid. And um, But I have to find that artist again that had done it. And look how he had done it. Because I, and they definitely get some opportunities to take some shots. Because it would be kind of neat to um, tomorrow. To take some shots of the water of the fireworks that's cool always know your subject matter that's the problem with um i know my subject matter when i when i go to marinas i love boats i've always i worked at a marina all through high school i worked um i, I was a boat builder i built put the windshields on them i put motors on them that was all through high school and um i've always i have always owned a boat myself i've always owned one and so i mean i've always just loved boating and so it's like one of those things. If you know something, that's what you paint. If you don't know it, then you better study it and just know. Because sometimes, like a lot of the students today were saying, I'm not sure what that is or how, how do I do it? Well, you have to kind of do research on the thing then so you know exactly what you're painting. It's very important to know what you're painting. You know, knowing people ask me, what do you paint? Um, paint things that you know and love. You know, if you know and love something, if you're a gardener, you're definitely going to paint something like, plants and, and what's in your garden. So here I'm just putting these little reflections in there. I didn't, you notice I didn't do the really small ones. That's going to come with a, with a smaller brush. I'm doing the big ones, all the big stuff, you know, the big, big areas with the dark. And so I've got the whole foreground is almost done with besides, I can put another wash across this um, real lightly. What I can use is my mister, and I can put a little wash if I want to make it. I think I'm going to make it a little bit darker. I'll show you how to do that once it's all dry. i got to take another shot of this. 11 beer. This is really good. Wow, that's really good. It has a little, I kind of like, it has a little bit of a fruit taste to it. So it's, <laughs> I kind of like um, a little bit of fruit taste in there. <laughs> not sweet. It's, it's not very bitter at all. It's very good beer. Again, it's a Shiner Holiday Cheer. And so, let's see, just as I'll dry. Okay, so now we're going to go in, and I think we'll have time to now do the, the detail details. That was my big, big lights, my big mediums and darks, my big... Now I'm going to the detail. I mean, look at how fast... Oh, wait, i got to do the boat here. So with the boat, the side of the boat, I'm going to take and wet this area first. And then I'm going to throw some it's white and so it's going to reflect what's a, a color around it because when something's white you can use any color you want for the shadow part of it because anything that's in the area anything that you have elsewhere in the area it could be some yellows in there some orange and so it can be any color that you already use if it's white and so here i'm just going to make that a little bit darker and now i'm going to um i'm going to mold it 
I'm going to mold it with the top being a little bit darker, right against the edge here. It's a little darker. And the back is a little bit darker, so I'm just going to I'm going to work it so that it goes from wet. I'm, I'm basically molding the paint. I'm just going in here, making it dark. And that's what all it is, controlling the pigment. How much pigment you use can control the softness. And is what I was teaching this week, trying to teach you. Is, uh, and I was hoping to have more of the background like we did with the Cardinal. But this will be, it's not bad. It's just not as much as I would, had hoped I was going to get for you guys. But there's things to come that we're going to be doing a lot of that. So keep keep watching. Let me see if you guys got any. Again here, I'm just sorry. <laughs> okay, so what, what, what were they doing before I read? <laughs> Can I read all your comments? Boy, you guys are really talkative today. <laughs> I have to go all the way back up. <laughs> I have to read it later on. And so here now, I'm doing my details. See. Going in there, doing my small, hard edge details. And I'm going to get my dark darks in there. And once I put down a pigment, I also float other things in there. And I will put a couple little lines here. And I'll put a little this over there. And the top of this part of the boat, we're going to do a little bit of the little, not windshield, but a wind block right here. Do a little wind block. And this is not totally dry yet, so I'm going to have to go over here because it's not totally, totally dry yet, but up here it was. And so I'm going to have to you know, wa wait for things to dry. Don't think If it's starting to get to the watermarks and it's damp, don't go into it then. Just wait. Just give yourself some time. I have plenty of, to do over here, and so let me just go right away. I'm going to take my rigger brush and get some of these some of the masks up there and so for that I, I like to turn my paper sideways why is because um it, to me it's easier to like i'm writing across i've been I mean, your whole life you're right across right and to go up and down like this up and down it's just too hard to uh, motion so it's best to try to do the motion that you're normally used to and writing is one of the things i just go like this see i can just go boom one shot and i can get a great nice line I'm used to that going across. It's like you're writing, right? And then these these should be um, yellow and red and orange, these lines, because they're right by the sun. And so again, just go straight across, down, like I'm writing. And uh, see how I made those orange and I made this one dark. And as you go away, it's going to get darker. And there's also some little crosses there because they have the wires holding the, the sailboat mass up and then there's the spinnaker or the jib i mean the jib and stuff and so all those things see if you know if you've been on a boat a lot you'll be knowing all that stuff and you know then you can you don't have to even look at the imagery or the of your photographs because if you've been in the boats you know all that kind of stuff not that it has to be sailboats, but even regular boats and all that kind of stuff. Just know your subject matter. It's a really good thing to know your subject matter. It really helps out a lot of things. I'm just going to put a little back and forth dots in here. Now these lines over here, I'm going to get a little bit steadier. You're gonna, if you wanted to use um, a ruler or a um, ruling pen for some of these lines, it's super fine. You know, don't be afraid of using... Now I'm going to... actually. I'm not sure why I turned it around. So it's closer to me, maybe. So I'm just making a line right there. Then I'll make a bigger line for the for the, for the jib. Like the wire lines, the ones that are having the wire on there, those I may want to do with a really fast, swift, swift motion. And it depends on how tight you are with your picture. You know, if you're really tight and almost photographic, then you're going to want to use a ruling pen. But for this, this is pretty, you know, not that not that perfect, and it's pretty loose. And so for me, I'm not going to be using a ruling pen. I'm just going to go fast. 
see if I go fast and for the jib I can go a little bit thicker and then I can go just one try to do it in one brush stroke too don't try to do it slowly like this just one brush stroke get it done get her done see just really fast boom 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 oops I missed that one this one nice nice thin lines Practice this on, on sheets of paper to get nice thin lines. Okay, there we have our lines. And see how the brightness now over here? And I will put, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here later on and I'm gonna put some white in my brush with a little bit of yellow. And then I'll shine, put a little shining things in there too. You're gonna see it's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> Now this is dry, so that's perfect. See, I got time now. I'm gonna do the windshield of the boat, which is basically just dark. You know, it's very, very dark. So I'm just gonna find. Just make sure you have your drawing right. I mean, look for your drawing, look for your pencil line. And if you lose your pencil line after a wash and you are just making it up, and you're not quite sure, do another pencil line first before you sit there and do it with the paint, because it's a lot easier then to erase and just get it to work for you with a pencil than it is putting paint down and not being right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> cheers guys cheers whoa there goes the bottle <laughs> cheers 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 happy new year guys it's gonna be a fun year right i am heading down to florida on the 7th and i will be at the villages and at the villages i will be doing a demonstration that sunday the 9th or 8th one of that whatever that sunday is let's see 7th 8th 9th on the 9th i will be in the villages doing a a demonstration at the Village's Art Center there. And um, and that's for Dillman's. And I'll be doing, and Karen Knutson will also be there with me and she'll do the second um, demo. And then I'll do the, after she gets done, I'll do a second demo. My first demo will be on w with watercolor, I think. And then my um, afterwards will be a acrylic demo. And that will be at the Village's on the ninth. And then the following weekend, I will be in Marco Island Art Center doing a demonstration. And, um, and of course, I will still be doing my Thursday nights down there. So just follow follow along. I will bring my all my stuff with me so I can still do the, still do the Thursday night paint alongs. See if you can't get some scenes from Florida. Keep myself safe. Let's see, we do a little red here now for the bottom of the boat. I'll do a little bit of like, now I'm actually, you know, putting in the red for the bottom of the boat here. Like it's, and actually it's still wet. So you're getting a soft edge here. But sometimes a soft edge is not a bad thing. You know, if you can control it, learning how to control. See, it's all about that. See, this got, that was a soft edge. It's still wet. But I controlled it enough so it, it's still a line, but it's just a soft line. And so I'm going to use a little bit more of that red and make another line right above it. And it'll be really nice and thick. And it'll be soft because, again, I went into a wet area. How about up here? We'll maybe do another red part, too. And now the um, pier itself um, is kind of almost too bright now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little bit of color. And then also maybe a little texture, like the lines on the pier. And then over here. And it's also can be um, shadowed. There can be shadows on the pier itself from things that are farther away here. And then there's a boat back here. And that boat has also, I'm going to use a side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this side of it. And at the same time, take the dark and create the front of the boat here, the shape of it. And then I can do the little cabin part right here of this boat. And I can also do the, where the, the boom is holding the, the sail across there, make that a blue thing. And that way I can get some more blue in there. So I got blue here. There. 
it's darker, but we're just going to make it darker on this side instead of the, the way it is in the photo. Do whatever you want. Okay, now while that's drying, because that's still wet, we got a wet painting here today. While that's wet, we're going to get the rest of our small little fine details. We still have plenty of time here. <laughs> so let me see. Any questions? Do you paint with water? It's funny that you asked that, uh, that if I'm painting with the water oils. Um, I will be in very shortly. I'm doing something for um, for Legion Papers, and it requires me to do um, oils. And so I will be doing some oils in the future. This is, uh, yes, 300 pound paper. Jan, um, Jan asked if this is 300 pound paper. Yes, it is. I mostly work on 300 pound. I don't like 140. Uh, 140 tends to, to me, it just always wrinkles everywhere and I don't stretch it and I'm too lazy to stretch it. And so let me just really quickly put, you know what, let me just, while we have time here, I'm going to show you this mister. What I'm going to do is down here, I don't think this got dark enough. I would like to have it a little bit darker, this whole bottom part. So I'm going to put a little mist on there. I'm just going to put a little wash across it. So I'm going to take it real lightly, just mist it up a little bit. And I'm going to take a little bit of darker kind of like a lavender a little bit what i have here a little bit of violet and white and so see how it's a little bit darker i'm just going to spread it across here and see how um i don't have to have much on my brush and i can still just do a light wash and it's giving me a soft edge because it's just a mist of water it's not so much um it's not like a really wet wash like when i do that with when i with my brush if i went wet with my brush then i'm picking up stuff underneath and so this i felt just need to be a little bit darker down here and i can just do that really lightly with my with the mister now here i noticed that um don't get too close either i mean oh i just wet the whole thing here oh shoot <laughs> i may have to i just wet the whole area here uh, sorry guys i'm gonna have to use the hair dryer i just wet in the area i didn't want to wet I've been waiting for this to dry over here and now I'm going to wet. So I'm going to use my hair dryer. Excuse me for a second. I'm going to shut my um, sound off because I just need to dry. Let's see. Get this over here. I'm going to shut the sound off for a second just so you won't hear me. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to hair dry this because I just, I just did an area that I shouldn't have wet. Hold on. All right, we're back. <laughs> Finally got dry. All right, that was my mistake. Sorry, guys. <laughs> that was, I just wet the whole surface, and, and that was not good. And um, hey, let's see who else is game. Hey, Sonia. Hey, Jan. Hey, Barbie. Happy New Year to you, too. And um, All right, to stop them. I'm not sure what you got going there. <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> so we're going to be going here now. Now I just want super, super details. Like I'm going to use a little bit of the um, dark. I'm going to use a dark here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get... I'm taking some dark Prussian blue and some reds. And so what I'm going to do in here now is get these little... The, um, the masks that are on there and just get them... To look all these little fine little lines that are going through here and i break it up back and forth i know in the picture it's very straight they're very straight see how they're very straight they are 
I'm going to give them a little bit more. I, I give it a little bit more of um, a little more squeakle to the water, like the, making the water a little bit more wild than it is, which is fine. You know, you can do whatever you want. I just find that I like to do a little bit more of the ripples because it's such a neat thing. The ripples are anyways are so neat. Like this little thing right there goes opposite, so it comes from here, and we'll come down this way. This one that's straight down, kind of comes down, and just and now my reflection because I I put that stuff over it kind of got a little bit lighter, and so I may have to darken my reflections again. A little bit down here also. And there's a bunch of little lines in this little thing. So you put all those in there, just here and there. Um, get a little bit darker down here. Maybe use my little bit bigger brush. Get this stuff a little bit darker. Go back in here. And also while I'm doing this, I might as well get some of the light colors in there too. You don't have to get all these dark ones. You can also put some light. And so that means using a little bit of white with my purple. I can go in there and get that part. Here I'm putting a little bit more darker reflections because it got kind of light when I sprayed over it. So watch your watch your spray when you spray over it when you go over it a second time because a lot of times you lose you lose again the um, a little bit of the darkness that you had going at first. And these are ripples because they could be anything and they can just ripple because the way the water is going up and down you get all that nice beautiful ripples in there and just back and forth. Some can be hard edge, some can be soft edge. Sometimes people like to put do a couple of these when it's wet, you know, so I can get some of the the um, soft edge ripples in there. Again, with my rigger brush, my rigger brush number four, I'm just going to go in here and just look up and see what you had. This is what comes down there. This one right here just comes down, ripples down, and it has a little ripple on the side here. Ripple, ripple. And then this one here is rippled above the, this one here comes down a little bit. And when I'm next to it, when I'm going sideways, and then just 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 general ripples in the water itself too. Sideways, you can just a dark part of the ripple. You can do that too. All right, and so the only thing I have left now is really really fine details, like um, here we're gonna put a couple of lines on the boat itself. We're gonna do the maybe here's a little gizmo, and then we've got. Uh, lines in the windshield here on this on this boat we're going to have a few of the outriggers coming back there where the fishing where they fish with and now we're going to mix a little bit of white with some of this color Wait, let me just get a couple more darks over here for the background to let the background stand out I'm going with some darker blue I'm going to use a bigger brush for that because I'm not, I'm not getting a big enough area covered. Get this boat to come forward by making whatever's behind it here. All right, so now we're going to use white. Now we're cheating. Okay, guys, we're going to cheat now. I'm going to use a little bit of white and yellow. And so there is a little bit of purple in my white, but that's okay. We're going to just make this a little bit of yellow, white. And where do I use that? I'm going to use that close to orange and white let me just show you what i'm going to do is I'm, I'm making it almost like um gouache and if i had gouache with me right here i would, could use gouache too because gouache you can use thick on your watercolor and so over here where there's hits you know look at the picture there's hits of light hitting the side of the side of the boat and stuff and there's stuff happening back there and so maybe the front of the boat is lit up uh, maybe through here there's a little bit of white maybe there's a couple um masses and that are light so this is definitely opaque and this is not, you know, you can't enter something like this into a transparent watercolor club, you know, because this is not transparent, this is opaque. But I truly enjoy sometimes putting some of this in there because I just feel it just gives it some realism to it. And I could do that with masking fluid in the beginning. But a lot of times in the beginning, you don't know what you're, you know, you can't get that looseness. And so I find it to be really neat to put this in afterwards and then just get a little bit of the white going through there. It just brings it to realism then too it's like i can get these little hits and it's so hard to get that i could scratch them out i guess with uh with an exacto knife but here like this this is the railing on the boat here so i can just put a little white and a little bit orange and and it just gives it a little flicker it just makes it pop forward and gives all that realism that's really just wonderful 
here there's a um, I think there's three windows actually I can make those dark on the side of the boat there's like three little windows here and of course I put white there so there we go three little boats and then little lines through there I hit a couple of things up here because it's it's reflecting you know there's the things and here we even have plastic over this area so I can actually put a little bit of darker um, color in here and just do like a little plastic like it's it's um there's plastic over that and so I just made it a little bit darker right there and I think that's gonna be pretty much it guys any questions I wonder the one you did earlier was good too I like them both happy new year thanks Cindy um tina david don't forget to you wanted to add some splashes of white in the sun background area oh that's what i just did <laughs> so back here i still gotta put slashes so some more of that slashes back here just kind of because it gives it gives it a look like the sun is hitting those things back there and gives them a little bit of detail of what's happening back there even though you, if you look close, you can't really tell what, what's going on back there at all. And I would have liked to put a little bit more orange over this area because I kind of think this area could be a little bit more orangey right here. Let's do it. Let's put a little bit more orange right in there. I'm just going to tap with my finger a little bit. All right, I think that's going to be about it, guys. Let me take the tape off, and I think we're done for another one. So I know it looks very complicated. Keep it simple. Like, look at this boat back here. I, if you look close, it doesn't even look like a boat, right? I mean, there's not that much detail in this. It's just the front of this boat is a little detailed, but if the drawing's there, it doesn't mean you have to make everything look perfect. It's enough to show that everybody's going to know that that's a mass of a, of a, a boat, and this is a boat, you know, you can tell it very closely and so just keep it simple don't have to overwork it to make it look like it's a photograph just kind of get that look and i think it'd be nice to have a little bit of this orange on the edge of this so i'm gonna take a, again a little bit more sorry i thought it was almost done but i just noticed now that it'd be nice to have a little bit of this orangeness on the side of this boat just to kind of reflect this a little bit into the side of the boat like the sun is hitting there a little bit you know why not you know and i know it's a little bit opaque but hey do it it looks good that way. All right, so we got a little bit of that orange in there. Let's take the tape off and we're done for another one and for, for the last painting of 2021. So next Thursday will be 22. And so hopefully it's gonna be a good painting. <laughs> I'm not sure what we're gonna be painting, but um, um, Gilly is asking me what kind of mister do I use? Um, if you go back to a couple of the um, newsletters you can go to my site and find a newsletter on the mister or actually i have i think don't I, I think on my youtube channel there's um i have a whole thing and you can go there and find out you just um type in an amazon mister or like i said go to I, I think i have a um youtube uh thing on the misters i did a little special one on how to use the mister and in the in the text or in the bottom of the thing there's a link to it it's not a it's not a um brand name it's just um they sell a lot of different kinds on amazon but it's just it's called a mister a mister sprayer it doesn't spray it mists <laughs> all right so let's see well, anything else you can only start with a great drawing some of us need help with that yes and um the drawing is very important here like i said you know your know your subject matter and um if i, I definitely want to do another um we're going to do another demonstration um, with wet in the wet and that's one thing but with, with it, when it comes to the drawing I'm going to show you guys how to do a, one of my things is going to be how to trace it again how to trace the image because you really need a good drawing that's the number one thing you have to have a good drawing and so here we have this this one tonight and this afternoons let's see what looks the difference and so here we have this afternoons and so I always like the second one. I, I felt the colors are a little bit better. The blue is fine. You know, it just is not, this is um, what it was basically. But um, so till next Thursday, and we will have something next Thursday, and it'll be a new year. And till then, oh man, boy, I was just thinking, cause I'm a, yeah, we will have it. So until next year, uh, happy new year, guys. Happy new year. See you next week. Bye-bye.